Uh, now. Uh, we are going to talk about testing and automated checking. Um, these two chapters um, are the chapters 12 and the, okay, is it? the chapter 12 and chapter 19 of the our package book. And when we are going to start with the package, do with the chapter 12. Um, and then one of the most important things to, to think about why to test. So uh, why should you start be, uh, writing tests? Because um, if you have never written tests before, you probably will going to think that it will be more work than just writing your code and, and, and making sure you are, because everyone that develops code have some internal mental model of testing because when you are developing your code, even if it's just a script or if you are developing a function, you, you are in, inside your head, you are thinking about this. You, you know exactly what you expect from your function, from your code, and you, and sometimes you even could have in your R script or uh, some command line tools that do some automated tests for you outside of R. So uh, everyone that develops code have some kind of testing. And what this chapter tries to, 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 to show us is a standardized way of testing packages inside R. And, um, and actually, um, there is in the software development world, there is a, a methodology called um, test-driven development that says that if you start building your tests before actually coding, you, you can achieve um, a lot of benefits in the end. Some of them um, is that you actually have fewer, you, you have fewer bugs you have a better code structure because if you have a really well-defined expectation from your function, you will write a better code because you know what you are expecting and, and you, you have a way of testing if, you, if your code is actually uh, generating that output. Um, you have fewer bugs because you test earlier, so your code will fail earlier and it's actually much easier to come back to old code and it's easier for other persons to try to look at your code and understand what you are trying to achieve. Even if your code is not complete, if you are still in the development phase, people will, will know wh what you expect from that piece of code. So it, it's, it's easier to, to achieve better, better software, a better software architecture. And um, if you start be writing your codes earlier, actually even before um, write, writing the code itself, um, you will not have the, the extra, extra work of writing your code or your tests in the end or, or actually um, translating your manual test into an automated testing. So, um, Basically, Hadley Wickham in the book, he, he talks about the test that package. Test that package is nowadays the most used uh, unit testing infrastructure in R, but actually there are other, other testing packages in R. There, there is the teeny tiny test um, and, and, other, um, and other like more manual stuff, but test that. It's, it's really integrated with um, if you use these and the, this workflow that is that is that is taught in the in the book. So using the test that package, th there is a function um, they use this package that sets all the infrastructure for using the test that package. If you run this function, use test that it will already. Um, build the, the folders and files that is needed to start testing. Um, uh, actually, in October of last year, uh, it, the, there was a major release of the test that package, the 3.0 version, and, and they changed some of the, of the ways you write your tests. 
And actually, I was expecting that during the time of this talk today, we would already had a new chap uh, that the book chapter would be already updated to to the version three, but actually not. The the chapter is talking about the ver version two. So we, we are going to in, in the in the live session we are going to, to talk about the, the, the differences. Um, and the basic the basic the basic structure of the test is a test a folder inside your um, your package directory and because um, even if you're using other testing infrastructures you can use the same tests folder but if you if you use the test that uh, you, you use the test that folder inside the tests directory um, and actually the main um, we, we have already talked about building functions in, in separated files in your package and the testing infrastructure would follow kind of the same the same and the same infrastructure if, if you have a file for a specific function you have a file for the tests of that function or, or the family of functions it's a it's a good way to organizing your your tests like having a correspondent file for the correspondent function and we are going to talk about that especially if you find old examples you always see that the 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 test starts with a context uh, function call it's becoming the pre the pre deprecated in the version 3.0 so you're not it's okay if you if you see that in especially in old content and actually the book itself is using the that the this function call and the test is always not always but the in the end of the test you always have an expectation for example if you have a function that is a is a um, arithmetic operation like an addition if you add one plus two you expect that in the end you have three for example so it's the it's your expectation what validates your test if you have a function that plots um, a scatter plot. Your expectation is to have, a, for example, a ggplot object in the end. So we are going to talk about specific expectations, but actually you can test almost every aspect of your code. For example, if a specific message is printed on, on the console, uh, if a specific error message is, is from, if, if, your, if your function fails, if the input is not correct, you can have some specific expectations for, for, your, for testing um, your functions. Um, and, and you can have, for, for the same function, you can have multiple expectations. Um, and this is the basic uh, unit of testing. Oh, you can, can talk, Michael. Mikael. Yes. Uh, I don't want to cut you. So uh, I have a question actually about uh, what you said about the plot. Uh, all right, so if you test and you expect a plot from a function, but then what if you, with that function, you want to create a specific form of a plot, then how can you actually test whether you're actually uh, getting what you want? Okay, it's a plot, but is it the exact plot that you expected? Yes, it, it's actually a, a really good topic, and um, and it, it's actually a really advanced topic because it's really hard to test that what, what you're saying. Because um, especially, I, I will mostly cover the ggplot plots because it's the, the ones I the one I use most. Um, actually, you can test several things. You you can test the ggplot object, for example. You can test. Um, hmm. No, no, um, th th there is a way of testing the image, but I will, I will, I will cover that later. But um, b before testing the the file, the like a saved file or something like that, you can test the ggplot object to test if the data points are the one you expect. The ggplot object uh, it has the um, the layer, so you can test if the layers exist. Like for example, 
for a scatter plot with a regression. You can test, oh, the dots lay, the, 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 the layer of the dots exist, um, the color is, is red. You can test it really specific things about the data, about the object that you use it for plotting. But actually, in, the, in this last version of test that, actually, um, it, it was implemented before, but they changed it a lot. There is a snapshot test that you can re actually create um, a file and it will test if the cre created file corresponds to the one you expected in, in the snapshot, but it, it's not really robust because it's kind of error prone because the different operation, operational system can produce different um, plots. For example, if you don't have the the fonts, the correct fonts installed, for example, the SVG ob object or PDF file would be different. So the snapshot testing is not the most robust, but it can it can test some some um, the um, the interface that that's generated from a plot. But we will you actually achieve there. Um, yeah, and. Um, like I said, you can use different expectations. For example, you, you have uh, all these verbs, uh, expect to equal, expect error, expect a class. You can expect, like I said, for a ggplot object, you can expect that the, the ggplot object will have the ggplot class. And that, uh, for example, if you are expecting that the input is a, is a string, you can expect an, an error if you, if it's uh, it's a vector, is the input, um, and you have like for example, you, you can expect that something is larger or lesser than than a determinated value, and you have that one that I talked about, the snapshot one that that uh, it's actually used for plots and and is also used for, for example, if your function outputs a uh, some kind of text, you can you can like a HTML file or a markdown file, you can test if your file have the, the specific uh, paragraphs or some kind of uh, element of the, of the text. Um, um, yeah, and, and actually there, there are some um, best practices about writing your tests. Um, the, the, um, the, the same way that you, it's, it's good to have good names for your variables and your functions. It's good to have an informative name for your unit test that, that you can just reading the, the, the test, the test chunk, you, you, you understand what is tested. Um, the, the best, the, the thing that you most have to um, test is how your, Oh, you, you can talk, you can say. Yeah, need to, um, I have a simple question. Um, so this testing, um, uh, I know you might have written package. Do you really follow these guidelines, this procedure for testings when you wrote your previous packages? Oh, sorry, I, 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 I don't, I don't yeah. understand. Um, my, yeah, my question is um, this testing, um, uh, when someone wrote a package, for example, um, you might have written a package previously. Um, do you follow these testing procedures when you wrote the package, your package before? Yes. Um, I, I, don't, I, I don't know if I understood correctly, but um, you, you can always test something. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, sorry, I, mean, I don't know, actually, <laughs> I, I think I don't understood it. Yeah, um, I think my question is, um, uh, I, uh, uh, previously, maybe you might have written package, right? Yes. So like, my question is, do you, do you follow these testing procedures when you written your package? Yes. Okay. Um, but yeah, my, uh, I, I will show an example, but it, I, I follow most of what is discussed in this chapter and, and it actually works really fine, really well. M maybe with oh, the live coding, we can, 
we, we can understand the, the the details details about that. Uh, I okay, will just right. actually I have few few slides. I, I think that the most important part of this topic is really showing the code. So all right, you just. So I think what you're asking will will be answered. If it's not, we will discuss it in the end. I don't know because <laughs> um. Uh, let me follow again. Um, um, it's good to separate the behavior of your test. For example, it's really important to test what you are you are expecting your users to use. Like if you have a lot of internal functions, uh, it's good to to test those. But it's the most important thing is to test the function that you expect your users to be calling. Like if you have a lot of um, detailed uh, calculations, but you have a, a function that calls those calculations, it's, it's, a, it's really good to have a good coverage of that, of that, that, the, that function that calls your, the other functions. Um, uh, and actually, you, if you are expecting to release your package on Chrome, there are some kind of tests that fails on Chrome because Chrome don't maybe don't, uh, don't have internet access. For example, if you have a function that is trying to access a website, download data, or accessing an API, you, a web API, you can skip. There are some functions to skip tests. Or if your tests uh, run for a long time, actually I think Chrome, if your test think, takes more than 10 seconds, Chrome will fail your test. Um, yeah, and, and, and it's good to avoid duplication in your tests. So uh, actually writing good tests also helps you to separate. For example, if you have a really big function um, and you need to test specific parts of, of those functions, it's actually easier to separate this function in order to and have two separated tests to, to, te to, to really transform that function in a unit, a unit that's testable. Um, it's actually in the software engineer world, it's, it's a part, it's, it's called a software pattern. That is the, oh, I forgot. It's like a, the segregation of interfaces and the, that, that you, you really need to have a specific function for doing a specific thing. So if your functions have a, a lot of respons responsibilities, it's, it's really hard to test your function. Um, and we also have specific uh, um, things that you need to test for accepting on Chrome. Chrome needs to, your package to always have, um, to be written in the English language, which will test if you, some, some words like strings are not complying with, with the language. If you have, for example, emojis or, or known, ask two characters, Cron will fail your test. Um, and um, yeah, we, we are going to that. And like I said before, now if, you're, if you need, if, if your test takes a lot of time off, or, or if the output is not precise, it's, it's better to skip the test. Even, it's good to have the test in your own machine when you are developing, because you, you need to test your code. But when you're submitting to CRAN, you can skip some tests. Um, and, and together with the, the testing infrastructure, it's really good to understand how um, the checks uh, are performed. Because actually, the, um, the, the checking of a package is more than just the testing. It checks for the structure, everything that we that we talked in the earlier chapters, like for example, if your functions have specific arguments, if your arguments have documentation, if the if the functions that are supposed to be exported are in the namespace file, um, this, this dev tools check function checks for all that things and also run your tests. Um, actually before the, the dev tools package being created, you needed to run in the command line. There is this R command check that, that you 
you need to go to in the command line to that folder and, and run it manually and basically. And what this DevTools check function do is, is basically running the, that, that command. And um, RE Studio have some good uh, uh, hotkeys for, for, for checking. Also, it's good to have the command, uh, the hotkeys for, for testing individual files. Um, and when you are, we are checking, and there are, there are three different ways that you are check. Um, there are different, three different outputs that comes from the check and there are errors, warnings and notes. Um, errors, errors is something that is not working in your package. If your function fail, if your test fail, if um, some specific files are, are mi missing, for example, if your description file is not in the, uh, in the, in the root of your, your, if your package, it will not even try to build the package. Um, there are warnings that could be some errors. It could not, but if you are submitting to CRAN, you have to fix the warnings. And there are notes. Some notes could be passed to CRAN, but it's also good to try to eliminate in the notes. The notes are mostly associated with the, with, with the things that I talked there. For example, if you have like non-English words or if you have some characters that are not understood, you have some notes that, uh, for example, if you define your code a variable that you are not using, in your code, it will appear on notes. It, it, it's not indicative of, of your package not working, but if you expect to submit to CRAN, you have to, it's good to, to fix some, some style things. Um, and the check function, it checks for the package structure for metadata of your package that is mostly in the description file. It checks for dependencies, for example, if your package calls function in another package, you need to have it in the in the description file. Uh, for example, if you are if you are using a function that's not released on Chrome, for example, if you downloaded a package from GitHub and install that, it will fail if you try to to limit it to Chrome. Um, it, it, there are spe any specific argument to 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 follow the current guidelines, it checks the namespace, it checks your code for errors on code. If you have data on your package, it, it, it has some, some, some checks for data. If you have documented your functions, when you write the R oxygen tags and create the RD files, it will check if the files are compiled correctly. It even checks for the vignettes. If you have compiled code like a Java code or, or C++ code, it will check for those codes and, and for the demos and examples of your code. Um, this is the, the part that mostly changed from in the last year because before using GitHub Actions, there, there were some, some specific um, web services that that you could use to test your package in another machine. For example, if you are developing on a Linux machine or in a Mac OS, you could test your package in, uh, you, can, you could send your package to a remote machine to test if it, it, if it would actually work on the Windows or Linux machine. And like it to last year, it was really common to see if, if you, you, if you, Browse GitHub, you will see a lot of packages that use the Travis, the Travis infrastructure. Um, but actually most of that today is replaced by, by GitHub Actions. And Travis was mostly used to test Linux and Mac OS and this app Voyeur was used to test on Windows, but all, the, all this could be checked on, on um, on GitHub Actions now, and um, the, this continuous integration infrastructure, mostly you, you just, it's really easy to use after you get the basics, because you just have to have a, a one document, you know, one file that describes what you want to, 
to check and what kind of infra infrastructure you're using. And when you commit to and push to GitHub, it will automatically upload the code to the remote server and test your package. And we will just have the, the output of that uh, later. So sometimes you can even be mailed. Um, but we are, yeah, like I said, uh, it would be good to have a specific topic about GitHub Actions in the next week. And now let's go to the coding, to the live coding. Um, I started a, a clean session of Fire Studio here. Um, I just like I, I created a new, um, a new user to to follow that. Oh, let me. It was, for example, I, I will run the full workflow of developing a package that we uh, we learned in the book, and and show how to apply the test driven development, and then discuss how to do that now. For example, we, we talked about using the, they use this, oh, the, the font size, okay. For example, we can use the, they use this create package, for example. Um, and I will, for example, create a package called map, map of operations. It will create all the infrastructure of the package create a, a folder and we uh, and it will already change my workspace to that to that package if my computer helps actually I'm running this code in a remote server because I was expecting that my computer will fry with <laughs> with the the zoom my CPU is in more than 80% of the time. Well, but um, if they use this create package function, it creates all the basic infrastructure. It even creates the R folder for, for, for the code. And we have, they use this, um, uh, no, it's, it is so automatic that I forgot the R edit, no. Oh, I forgot which one for to create a function. <laughs> it's the use R. Edit it, R. Use R. No. Use, use R. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was with edit in my, but it's always used. For example, if I use the user and I say that I, I want to create a function for addition, I will create a addition. It will create the the file already, the R file. There is inside the app folder here addition, right? Um, and the same way that we use the, it, it even have this this message here is up here about use this use this use test. If I if I just call the use the use test without any argument, but with the addition file open, it will Oops. It will already set all the infrastructure. Well, you see that it already created the, the test folder. The, it set the, the test that basic infrastructure. And it, since I, I was with the addition file open in the editor, it already cre created a test addition. Okay. And it, it actually created a, a basic a basic test that always passed the test. Like for example, in this test, it's not testing any function. It's just, uh, it's just testing if two plus two is equal four. But for example, if we create, um, is everything right to now? I'm just following the basic workflow. And, and um, in, the, in the chapter, it, talks about the, the hot key for testing that is control or common T that it, it can also be, be, be run through this build more test package. For example, our package don't have any function, but already has a test that pass the test checks. If you run this function, it will run the David tools test 
and it will run this file and it is saying that it passed the test. If we change that here for, for example, expect that this is equals five and run the test, it will, it will, we expect that it will fail, right? It, it have some, it's really important to, I will increase that. It's really important to understand these outputs. It, uh, it says, uh, when you have a lot of tests, it will append a list of different files that you are going to test. And you can have more than one test for each file. And it's saying, oh, it's, it was expected that the va value was four and it was actually five, uh, five and, and it failed. So it's, it's uh, important. Um, for example, let's create the addition, addition function. Function. And we would expect, for example, uh, two arguments, like for example, the, the, num the first number and the, and the second number. And our function would do basically, um, get, um, for example, the result one plus non sure and return the result. And we can, we, we can create their oxygen tags for this function. Addition, description, I get the title, the first tag is always title, the second is description, add this to value. Values. And um, my computer is slow. <laughs> you have the, you can add the param, num one, first number. Number and export. We we could have a lot of other tags like examples or explain uh, explanation of the of the the return. But with that, it's already okay to pass the test. I will save that function. There is a usually what most of the people do when they are developing code. What what most of most of the most time what people would do, they will actually execute that, that code and try to write some kind of, for example, you can execute that code to, for the addition function being created in your, in your environment. And maybe you, you probably would add that code here, for example, addition two plus three, execute that and expect that to output five, right? That's what mo most people will do. Um, what the test-driven development, the testing workflow is supposed to do, ex um, not, not executing your tests in the console or in the file that you are developing, but in the test file, you can, I will replace that with addition. Right? I want to know if my addition works and I will execute the addition function um, I will save that result in a file and I will expect that this object, the, the add result is, ex, is, is equals five, right? Cause I'm, I'm, I'm adding two plus three and we expect that to be five. Um, and uh, and we and now if we test your uh, our our package, it will actually run that code, and it will say that it passed. And we, we can have several tests in the same file. For example, we can have uh, actually I'm going to test if the addition fails. For example, um, if if I try to pass a string to that 
to that function. What it's supposed to do? It will get an error about non-numeric argument passed to, to this addition operation. And we can have an expect, this expect error function, it's, uh, I would say that it's, um, it's, it would be hard to understand, but I will have the, expect, all those functions are within the test that package. For example, if we would expect an error message for that execution, for, uh, let me open the, the documentation here to show. We have, um, for example, the usage, it's, it, it expects an object that fails. You can define a, a regular expression about the message that comes with the error and actually the specific class of the error. We are not going to talk about the class of errors, but I will show an example about the, the message. I expect that this execution fails. So I can add um, the, what, uh, the head with this message, for example. Because you, usually most of the time when you are developing code, you will, um, oh, I can remove that. You will have some kind of, um, of, of, of things that you don't want your user to do. So we can test like specific errors that, that you expect your, uh, your, your functions to address. And also, because here I'm using a, a default message, but actually we could have in our, in our function, we could capture the error message and actually change that message to whatever we want. And that, that will, would be more useful to, to test a specific string. I'm, I'm using a generic, um, a generic um, error here, but we could actually change that message to be whatever you want. Um, and now I can test. Actually, the, there is the control T, the control T hotkey. It tests just the file. Um, actually not. Uh, let me run the test here. I don't know if, uh, like I said, I created a new, a new user. So I think my hotkeys are not set correctly. You see that now I have two tests that, that are passing. Both of them are for the addition package. Like I said, if I had, for example, if I change that to six, this test will fail. And, um, and here you, you will see that now I have one test that pass, one test that fail. Okay. It says the full duration of tests. Um, um, and now um, uh, um, so someone has any, Anything to, 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 to address now? And Sham, Sham Sudin, you are, you, are, you are talking about if I use tests, it's, it's exactly that way that I developed my package. I, I always think about how I'm going to implement. And like I said, we, we, you could even have your tests written before the function. If I already know that I expect my function to, to sum the values and, and return five, you could already write that file before, right? You, you could, the test-driven development says that you first have to, read, to write a test that fails and you need to write your function to pass the test. It's a, it's a, it's a specific mindset, but it actually works. <laughs> okay. I actually have a question about uh, testing. So um, one, so what should we test? Uh, and wh what I mean by that is um, if we have lots of functions, are we going to make um, a test for all of them? Or I think in the chapter 12 um, on yeah, section, I think, yeah, section 
uh, 3.1 about what to test. Uh, there's also uh, a point that I haven't understand. I, have, I haven't understand yet by Hadley. So he said that um, focus on testing the external interface to your functions. If you test the internal interface, then it's harder to change the implement implementation in the future. Does um, anyone get what's what that is? Yeah, but I, I surely understand. Um, I don't totally agree with what he, what he says, but actually, if you already wrote a lot of tests and you need to change your function, you would need to to re rewrite your tests, right? But it's actually it, it, it's actually something that only happens if you wrote bad tests. If you write the the good test and you know what you are expecting, you would not need to rewrite your your tests. It's it, it, that, that that's the problem about not having the the software architecture before writing the <laughs> you you because. It's something that, that happens a lot. If you are just in the terminal throwing code there and you don't really thought about all the possible, the possible outcomes of your code, especially when you are starting, you, you will actually um, go through that a lot because you, you are experimenting and you don't really, especially if you don't wrote tests, a lot of tests, you, you don't really think about what to test. So you, you will go through that about, oh, you change the code, you change the test, you change the code, change the test. But if you write good tests and, and it comes with experience, you would not need to hey, write a lot of things and hey, implement. And actually your user interface will be much more defined. You have a much more structured and defined user interface. You can change the internals of the function without changing the parameters, without changing the output, and it will still pass your tests. I, I don't know if I addressed what, what you're expecting. Yeah, so just test everything, right? Yeah, the, the, yeah but, but, but it, there, there is also this, the, this trade-off about the time that you spend implementing tests and, and actually writing code. So, or some really complex, um, complex um, code it would be really hard to to test everything. So you need you you can test most of the. Or what I'm trying to say, you, it's good to have at least one test for each function. Um, your test not always will cover all the possibilities that your function, especially if your functions have a, a lot of if errors inside them, a specific test will not go through all the, the branches of the, of the if else, right? So sometimes for really complex functions, we would need several tests to cover all the possibilities. So it's sometimes it's mm -hmm. not worth it to, to write all of them. Um, and, and it's actually, there is a methodology that use, is used to evaluate the, um, the complexity of your functions and how you address them. That is test coverage. It's, it's expressed in a percentage that says for each line of code you have, how much of them is tested, not just the functions. So we could have all your function tested and actually just testing 10% of the lines of code. And, um, and uh, in the software engineering, it's, it's really used that that test percentage is used as a metric of how good your, of your, or, or how good your code is at least tested. Because you, you could have bad tests and tests that are not actually useful. But if your, if your code don't have any test, it's indicative that it could fail any time. It could fail with uh, dependence update. It could fail with if R updates. It could change for uh, anything. <laughs> so, um, and that's also another thing that the test that if you are using a dependence and your dependence and you have automated tests running 
continuous integration te uh, running, if something changes like uh, our updates or a dependence updates, you could, uh, you could automatically be notified about something that broke in your package, for example. So you, if you have parts of your code that aren't covered, you will, you will just discover the bug when someone re reports the bug or... So there is always the trade-off about writing tests and how much... Sometimes you would have more tests than actually code. <laughs> But, yeah. um, I kind of, I'm always I I always get bad data in, so I'm always testing the the data. And I'm gonna put in the chat a package I just found a couple months ago. Or it's called point blank. So it's a way to test your output, your data output. And so I always kind of look at what would be embarrassing if I didn't catch this, so like null values. Um, and what's great about this package as well is you can write, you can write a, it has a function and it'll write, it'll make a file for you, a test that file for you. It'll give you warning. So I'm always looking for, and I ran a test this morning and I found a, someone put in a fake ID code, but they didn't put in a site. So that caught it. <laughs> so. I I've kind of, I had a hard time doing tests, um, but I kind of became addicted to it as well because you try to be clever to see how would your analysis break if you were wrong, <laughs> and so that I kind of look at it that way. That's my yeah, you, you need to pr to predict the behavior yeah even before implementing your analysis you you need to how is so, someone so going to mess it's me exactly up? <laughs> good design it's it's a design strategy. Yeah. Because actually, most of people will throw code in the file without actually thinking about all the <laughs> all the ways the code could broke could yeah. could break, right? <laughs> in my case, people do weird data entry things <laughs> that break all the time. Yeah. For example, this I, I, I wrote a really simple function that's already and I, I don't even wrote code. I used something that's already implemented in R, and and this function could fail. If a lot of different ways, like like I showed, it could be, it could be, um, someone could put a string. For example, if someone uses this addition function, passing a a vector, for example, for example, if if this is a vector, this this result would be also a vector, but. It, it's it's probably um, a not standard um, uh, so something that you don't want. You don't want your your examples to accept vectors. So you could add, add a test for for that expecting example expect. Um, length. No, uh, expect equal. Wait, uh, I think there is a, a specific expect for length, but for example, you could add length of add result. Um, equals one. And it will fail because actually now the, the length is true. Like for example, let me run this test. You see, it was it got the the value and the and the length wasn't what I expected. This is a way of protecting your code from something that that your users would input. And actually, the best way would be to add in the code, for example, before the example, if length of num one greater than one already throw an error and trying to capture that error with the expect error thing. So this is this is what Kevin was talking about, about trying to predict how your code could break, right? And especially because R itself has this weird stuff about, for example, why the why the addition function, the base R addition function accepts a vector and not just one value. Because 
most of our functions are um, were created expecting vectorization, but not always you expect your function to your code to use that vectorization. So it's good to prevent that kind of behavior. For example, now I will run again this test and I suppose to, to get everything right. <laughs> yeah, now that the tree passes. Um, oh, wait, and we actually run you without time. Oh, because I, I just talked about tests, but actually the, there is the other thing, there is the check. I created a, um, a basic package here that don't have anything. Actually, the description don't have anything. It's a, it created an empty description file, right? And I will run the check function. Um, the dev tools, the dev tools check function. It will run those tests, those checks that we were talking before um, on the. There, there is, there is addressed in the chapter nineteen about um, if your package have documentation. If you have, for example, I created. Um, I created the package, but I didn't document it. So I created the function, I added the oxygen tags, but actually I didn't run the dev tools document. So it didn't create the, oh, actually it ran automatically. Yeah, okay. It documented the functions and created a namespace file. But, and, and since I export the function, you see that that added the, and when, when you run the check function, it creates automatically, I was, I was, I was forgetting, forgetting that, but actually you see that that it gave a warning just in the beginning of the checks. It, so it addressed the warning that my package don't have uh, a standard license. So getting that warning, I would need to come here in the description and remove that. For example, use, I would use this, use MIT license. And it will already update this file. And I would, for example, run again the checks and it, and it will suppose it to not give this. So running the checks is a good way also to understand if you are developing correctly your package. I don't know. <laughs> it's a good, so you, you could be running all that, all that to, to say. Now it, it says that the, the package Built correctly, it, it's now now it's ready to be installed. For example, but but there is a a specific package, uh, an option that you can add to your project option. For example, uh, in the in the build options, actually there are, there are a lot of different options that you could change on, on how cron test. But there is an argument that I just forgot. Let me. This is my. Ecto session here with a pre, uh, package that uh, I'm developing, and I will. So, but my computer is so slow that uh, it's getting slow. For example, there is this argument scram that you can add to to the check argument here, and and what this this scram do is like you see here that it actually run the dev tools with an a scrum argument here, and, and, so, and it adds additional additional steps to the test, like checking if the um, if the author list is, is actually accepted by Cron. If the actually since I don't have anything, it passed anyway. But there are uh, additional, so it's really it's, it's an important step to add this this scrum. Um, yeah, I think it's basically that. And um, one, one thing, other thing that test that did, for example, when I use they use this use test that it already already added the test that package to the suggest and also added this option saying that I'm using at least the version three of test that because for retro compatibility with older versions you could change that to version two if you you are already using the old test but if you're starting now, it's not relevant. Just use the defaults. Um, yeah, <laughs> we can address some. Oh, oh I, I really need to show another thing that we were talking about the the test coverage, and that is actually a, a DevTools 
coverage test coverage function that will do that thing that I was. What? Wait, 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 wait. Oh, actually, I, I didn't. I have to install and restart. I think for it to do it, and I will. Um, because this function on the test cover, it will show exactly which lines of your of your code is actually cover coverage by, um, and and you saw I, I used this install and restart uh, button that already installs my package. For example, I did I actually my function just have three lines. So uh, if you had a lot of R files, it will and I have a hundred percent coverage of this. This file, uh, if I had some lines that wasn't coverage, it will be had. And it's actually saying that I, I'm actually testing this line two times here. It's probably wouldn't be necessary to test it two times. Um, I will show, for example, for a, this is a real package that I was developing. And um, it's a package for, treating videos, like uh, it gets videos of fishes and, and calculates some metrics about these, um, the, the, about the, the, the videos, the composed videos. And, um, and I will run the test coverage just to, to, to show what I was talking about the, the, the test coverage. Actually for this package, I have a really low test coverage. <laughs> <laughs> but I have the most, um, but, but it's, it's a good example of, of the, of a common, for example, I have a, a function for converting video to image, for extracting the metadata from, from the video to flipping coordinates of the video. And for each of those functions, I have the test. Um, actually, it takes some time. We can, yeah. <laughs> My computer is at 98% CPU, it will be slow. So yeah, <laughs> I just yeah. like it running. So um, you guys have any, any comment? Yeah. One question, what's the theme that you're using now? Okay, this one is, it's actually a package that you need to install to have this theme. It's called, I will is run the, the other session here. Is it's it the RS theme? It is RS code IO. Ah, this all right. You, need to, you install this package from, from GitHub and- Yeah, yeah, I think I've seen that. And then you have to, to run a function to install the code, to, to install the, the theme. And I'm using the FIRA code um, um, font. Actually, it's taking a lot of time. I think it's mostly because of my CPU usage, but it's, it's okay. Um, any, and let me see. Oh, I, I didn't address the, the, you, you, you asked the specifically about the, the expect the test that, Expect snapshot. Expect snapshot is is the is the function that you you, you would use to to test the plots, like I said before. Mm. Um, and also, you, you can see that it's actually shown in, as experimental. It's because I would say it can break in on some. And I would also like to say that. Like I said in the beginning, I was expecting this chapter to be already updated in, in this time, but actually Hadley Wickham was written another book um, recently that is the Master in Shine book. And, and there is a, a book chapter about testing in the Master in Shine. And in the, there is this one that I'm opening right now. And in this book, he, he already, um, treats the, the updated, the updated, the updated usage of test that, and actually for shiny apps, apps, 
he, he talks about about this snapshot functionality because you have to test the user interfa interface in the HTML files and and it's used a lot. I will not address it now, but it's a good re it's a good material to to follow. Actually, this is the chapter twenty one. This and also there is the there is a specific vignette in the test that package about the third edition of the actually it was released in October last year and Hadley we can also had a you, you can find in the in YouTube a video about the changes in the third edition it's if you haven't used the editions before don't don't, don't mind about that you just start using the third edition but if you if you're already using the the, the second version you there are some nuances that have to be addressed but yeah it's mostly that and also the they use this 2.0 that was released in in december some of the material in this book their packages haven't been updated still to um, and there are a lot of things about github and git usage in the package then next week i'm going to address how to update this package to github and and run the github workflow for testing in in different operational systems and it's maybe good to to understand how to update to to address the github use usage i don't know <laughs> do you know if the book covers versioning in github because i was having a problem with that but i didn't look it up how to do it do you send your binaries but i i maybe come back to that but i was just curious i was trying to remember if there's a when you want to release like a new version of the update the version of the package and when you want to put it on github um i tried to do that <laughs> yes for example for example i have a package that actually is not released anywhere else so i use the this the nine nine thousand for example, for, for each commit I, I get, I, I updated this. So, but, but I think you're, you're, you're actually talking about um, synchronizing the version with GitHub and- Yeah, and, yeah. And all. Yeah, cause for, for most, most um, computing uh, programming language, um, in most software repositories, um, when, when you release a newer version, like you release a version 3.0, um, most of the repositories will still uh, have the version 2 for people to download and for, so I want to use the version 2 of the package. This is actually a, a problem of CRUN, because CRUN always updates, so you you have always to test with the with the most recent, recent release of a package. You, you can't with cron packages you can't um, force for example these to I, I want to test with test that 2.0 so actually Hadley created a, a new configuration for for changing if you want to use the the two or the three edition but actually with that he has to maintain both codes inside of the package I, mm. I, I don't know if if I address your question correctly but um, well, that's okay. But, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Actually, just to, to, for showing, for example, I had I, I run that test coverage in this function that has some files. For example, I had some files that has, for example, 118 lines and 100 percent of coverage. But I have some files that I I haven't built 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 tests. For example, there is zero, and I have some files that that just test part of them for i will open this one that has only 75 percent to show for example uh, for example for this function i tested everything but for this other function i didn't test anything and for this other function i for example i didn't test if you enter this if if statement for example the show is really and one thing that had i added in the uh, in the mastering shine shiny book about testing is about adding useful hotkeys for the test and uh, the test the 
test addition, the load all functions, and the actually the test coverage, because you can run the test coverage just for a file okay, here. Is, he uses, for example, this test coverage in the command R or, or command shift R for the whole package. They run, run the test. Because actually, you can run the test just for, because if, if you have a lot of functions, you don't want to, to run all tests all the time if you just change a single line of code. So the basic workflow would be to run the con control shift L that loads. Oh, oh, wait, I need to save it. You need to, the control shift L would load all. This is the defaults. Actually, I, okay, I, it's because it's I, I executed manually, so it already exists in my, for example, when you, when you run the control shift L, it will load the functions in the, fun, in the package environment, not in your global environment. You see that I have this math operations package here environment. The functions exist here, you see. The, so you don't need to actually load the, the, the package in your environment. And if you run just the control T, Okay, no, yeah, I haven't set the hotkey. So it, it, if you set that hotkey and you run just the control T, it will test just this, this file, not the whole package. And it's also good to have the control shift T to test the whole package once you build it. So yeah, <laughs> I will stop sharing now because I'm already I passed a lot of time. <laughs> I get. Okay, I, I hope I addressed some useful <laughs> stuff for you guys. Yeah, the snapshot uh, sounds really useful for me. Yeah, I, I think there is a, a vignette in the test that's just about snapshotting. It's, it's a yeah, whole I'll, topic. Could be I'll hours talking that. about it. Because in my work, I do um, my, the package, the function that I make is usually just extending um, whatever package it, that has existed. Like I want to upload the results immediately or uh, make a bunch of plots in one uh, big figure. So I think this would be a really useful thing to do. Yeah, you are using the, the cow plot or the patchwork, any of those? Yeah, or? like that. Because yeah, yeah you, you could actually have a test for uh, for, for checking if, if for example, if all the frames are correctly in the in the patchwork mm -hmm. or the core plot, if all the all the figures exist in the in the figure, if the layers are correct. That's good. Cool, yeah. And then next the snapshot. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited about checking my code coverage. <laughs> My test coverage. I'm like, I don't know why I haven't tried doing it. I think I'm afraid, but yeah, exactly. It's pretty easy. When I saw the you, output, I was like, oh, I need to try it. If you if you set the 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 the, the hotkey, you you can do that for like a control G and it, it runs the, the coverage, control C, I don't know. Yeah, we need to find a, a good hotkey. But I think yeah, it, it, you just press a button and it will show you what's missing from your test. And it actually helps you to write a better test, a, a test that is lacking. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and, the, and that is this, that, that, that thing about like having everything 100%, it, it's actually hard, but, but you, you can, but with the test and the coverage percentage, you can have a, um, a whole picture about what's going on. And actually, it's a really good way of starting your life as a open source code contributor. Because if you, for example, you can go to GitHub now, download the, for example, the ggplot code and see which functions there are missing tests or don't have code cover. And you could mm. write a good test or, or enhance the tests that are already been doing there. And submitting it for um, for any package. Yeah. That You're right. It, I think the good way many many academic softwares are not implementing tests. Not many, at all. If, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I'm I'm being generous. <laughs> yeah, because people just write um, the software to I don't know to graduate or publish an article, and afterwards they don't even maintain it. And especially in the 
biomedical research. Yeah. Most other persons don't have a, a software engineer in background. So most of this would not be, most of the, we can say that about the R community in general, because most of the people uh, are exposed to code as a data analyst. So even the persons that start developing, developing packages aren't engineers. So they aren't exposed to this kind of content. Hadley Wiccan did a really rouge thing about creating the dev tools, test that, all that, and and the, and how R Studio is supporting the development of the, those packages. But actually, even Hadley Wiccan is not a software engineering in, engineer. So yeah. you, you, if you follow the test that development, the versions, I think you will see that a lot of things changed and he, cause he was learning by doing like he was writing re writing this these books and developing the package and, and you you can see how the how how some concepts have have changed in his mind during this the, the development of those packages but actually if you go for more especially languages that i reuse it in the industry like java you, you will see that they have really defined ways of how to develop in tests or and in some companies like Google, Google has really strict strict uh, definitions of how the code should be tested or or what is expected to be the coverage of a piece of code that you should submit to Google. Um, how this software review process is supposed to happen? Um, yeah, th things like that 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 lacks in the R, R community. So yeah, I guess a lot of things to do. And you're right, um, contributing to tests seems to be like um, a really great gateway to contribute to open source um, software development. Definitely give it a try. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, if you all agree next week, um, yeah. I can talk about GitHub Actions and extended um, test, extended, extended checking, especially checking sure. in different operational systems. I will bring a, a more developed package that we can test different, the different outputs that are generated during the, the checking process. That sounds great. And how to do it. Sounds amazing. All right. <laughs> All right. See you guys. Have a great weekend. I gotta go. Yeah. Right, then. Yeah. See you next week. See you next week.